The Lion's Gateway is one of the most powerful astrological events that happens every year. And this year, 2022, I'm feeling that the Lion's Gate portal may very well be one of the most significant events in our lifetimes. My name is Ona Christie. Please join me diving into the energies of the Lion's Gateway 2022. I will be sharing my own Akashic in inquiry into the Lion's Gate 2022 to assist in clarifying the Lion's Gate portal meaning. And I'll be also doing a spirit animal reading specifically for this year to help with the areas of health, uh, relationships, career, and love. And finally, there's a couple of resources that I'll have for you at the end of the video to help if you want to go even deeper into these energies. So first of all, what is the Lion's Gate? Yeah. Well, it is an astrological event that does happen every year, and it's when the star Sirius rises along with the sun. And this happens typically in, in uh, late July to mid-August every year. This year, the whole window of this portal starts on July 26th. It moves through about August 12th, and the the, the apex of this period is usually every year around August 8th. And then there's also a, an association with this whole phenomenon where the belt of Orion, the three stars of Orion's belt, align with the pyramids of Giza in Egypt. Okay, so what does all this mean spiritually? Well, we have th basically three aspects and, and then a fourth. Um, we've got the star Sirius, we've got the sun in Leo, um, in which Leo, Sun just went into Leo on July 22nd, and we've got the number eight, and then there's um, the, the, the figure of Orion plays in there as well. So let's look at these each. First of all, the star Sirius. It is a super, super powerful star. It is the brightest star in our sky, and it's actually a cluster of stars, but we see it as one star. And it gives a ton of, ton of electrical energy off, okay? And because of this, it's really seen in many traditions as the God star or our spiritual sun. And it's associated with uh, this, this idea of power and liberty as well. And healing, we'll get to that in a bit. And okay, so there's Sirius. Now we have the sun going into Leo, all right? The sun and Leo, Leo is all about power. Now the sun, of course, represents the self. Leo also is about the power. It's a, this king archetype. So it's associated with uh, the higher self. And so we've got this really, really powerful um, placement of the sun as a signifier for the self. So this is a, a, a lot of this has to do with ascension or self-awareness, self-enlightenment, self-empowerment, um, and the spiritual aspect of, of the ascension and starting to really align with the higher self. Then we've got the number eight, right? So remember August 8th, that is the 8-8 portal. And the eight has a number of meanings as well, numerologically. If you look at it, it looks like a lot like an infinity symbol. So it has that sense of uh, kind of abundance or, or never-ending manifestation, right? So manifestation is a huge aspect of the eight. And also, it's also a power symbol. So this is like this triple power time of year, right? We really can feel it too in the natural world. If you're in the, the Northern Hemisphere, um, we get the, the full force of the sun at this time of the year. And so this, this really, we can feel it at all levels. We can feel it spiritually. We can feel it physically. There's a lot of fire energy involved in at this time of year. And then finally, uh, this idea of Orion, right? So Sirius is near the Orion constellation. And the myth of Orion, uh, there's an interesting story about the character Orion. He was a great hunter. And at one point, he went into service of, of a king, and he got drunk, and he kind of tried to force himself on the king's daughter. King didn't like that very much. <laughs> so um, he had Orion blinded, and then Orion was kind of wandering around. Well, that's, that's pretty tough for a hunter to be blind, right? <laughs> Most hunters rely a lot on their sight. 
And so he finally found his way to this oracle who told him that if he could go to the eastern edge of the world and um, put his face up to the rising sun, he would be healed. And so he did that. He went and found the sun god Helios as he was rising and he was healed. Um, so that aspect of healing and healing through exposure to the sun, to this divine energy from the sun, that is all also a part of the, the lion's gate portal, spiritual meaning. Okay, so now that we've defined what the lion's gate is, I just want to share um, an Akashic inquiry. I went in and tuned into my higher guidance and my Akashic guides and just asking about this period of time, this particular lion's gate 2022. And so I'm just going to, to tell you what they told me. And uh, before I go into it, I just want to let you know you, you know, this is from one perspective. This is from my particular access to the Akashic Records. Everybody has their own access. And so if you feel like you're getting something out of it, great. If it doesn't feel true to you, fine, just leave it. Just take what suits you from this. So when I asked them to explain the energies of the Lion's Gate Portal 2022, they told me this is a blue flame moment. So I'm, I'm familiar with the blue flame somewhat, but I decided to ask them what the blue flame is just to see what their perspective would be and if they'd give me anything more. They told me that the blue flame is a protective or a destructive and purifying force that has existed on this earth for eons and was implanted here for the protection of the planetary God consciousness. They told me that this blue flame was implanted here basically by the archangels and that at this time the energies of the, the lion's gate are really amplifying the blue flame energy on the planet. They're activating it. They're activating this protective mechanism on the planet. Um, and then they're also telling me that this is the final moment when sides will be chosen. Now, if you're following myself or probably many, many other spiritual channels out, out there, you'll know that this is a time of kind of spiritual warfare, um, that there's a lot of tension between light on, and dark on, this pla on the planet right now. And so they're telling me that beyond this point in time, beyond the Lion's Gateway, it will be a much more difficult to change paths or switch sides up until now. It's been possible if you're on the ascension path to kind of slide down, but even more possible if you're on the descending path to kind of jump timelines and, and get on this ascension path. Um, they're saying beyond this point, it'll be harder. It is not still not impossible, but more difficult. So what I'm given to understand is if you're on the ascending spiral, if you're, you're really working towards a spiritual ascension and it will, you're, you're going to be more heavily assisted. There's going to be more momentum behind it, helping us to rise in consciousness. It's, but the same for those who are on the descending spiral, it will probably be more, you know, more of a force kind of dragging them down. Okay. Um, so then they said each side is arming its warriors. So then I asked, what can we expect this to look like physically here on earth? And the first thing I said was fear not, okay? Fear not. They said the physical manifestation will vary from place to place. You will be guided to where you need to be if you listen. If you choose not to listen, the guidance may become forceful, they say. So I'm just going to read verbatim here. Pay attention. The blue flame is a protective force. You will not be asked to do what brings you harm, where you feel the force field blocking you, turn around and avoid. Where the way parts open before you, go forward. This is tricky territory. Disobedience to your inner voice will not yield desired results. 
they say that from here on out to disobey your higher guidance will become too painful and immediately so and this is part of the help okay so for a lot of people moving forward it may this may actually trigger times that seem harder okay because it, it, we're all working through negative energy right <laughs> we're all working through this stuff and we're collectively working through it and but as we begin to ascend and to raise our vibration it shakes things up and and we have to kind of fight our way out of that right so it's just like if you're stuck in mud and you're just standing there it may not feel like there's much resistance but you start to try to lift your foot up and you'll feel a lot of resistance that's what's happening right but they're saying that we have this inner compass this inner guru that will help us to navigate the way like if you're stuck in a swamp right it'll help you to navigate the way through but you have to really 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 listen and they're saying that if you take steps away from kind of where you're being guided or if you're not taking the step that's suggested it's going to you're going to be running into a lot of this negative energy that's out there right it's not that you're creating the negative energy it's not necessarily even yours it's just like the, the, the your inner voice is going to be on like on, on call all the time to help you through it but it, it, <laughs> it's a matter of learning to listen to it really well then I asked what to do to prepare here. And they just said, just be still and listen. They said, you will be shown what to do. You always have. Accept the healing that is there for you. Be sensitive to false energies. Trust your heart and your gut, not your mind. And here's something they said that really struck me as amazing. They said the job of the mind is to ask the right questions, listen for guidance, and act appropriately. If you do not understand the answers that you receive, be still. Keep asking. Ask in different ways to clarify if you need to. Then act. Don't assume anything. And they say this is important. Don't assume anything. Allies can look like enemies. Foes can look like friends. Feel your way through this. Remain always in gratitude and know that you are loved. Never forget that you are loved, for in knowing this, you become an agent of love. Know that there is divine purpose to all that takes place on earth. There is a divine plan. It is, however, up to you to fulfill it, your own little portion of it. Take heart, for if one falls, many more will step up to take their place. Okay, so this <laughs> this is really like a kind of locker room pep talk here, <laughs> a little coaching from spirit, um, telling us that this this is just the next step in this whole unfolding that we've been seeing, you know, starting even before 2020, but really starting to come to a head in 2020. Well, it's it's progressing, right? And so just be aware, be know that this is part of the divine plan. And in addition, one thing I'm kind of hearing between the lines is to work with the blue blue ray and the blue flame and so you can just imagine this blue flame around you this protective flame around you um you know call on the blue flame in meditation i'm getting right now i'm getting bring it into your heart right um you can call on any of the blue ray ascended masters if you work with ascended masters and archangels it would be archangel michael el moria some of those um lady faith if that doesn't ring your bell whatever it is even just the color blue wearing blue visualizing blue will bring that protective energy around so let's go on into the reading i'm going to be using my whoop, oh i've got this flying background so this is my spiritual animal spirit animal awareness deck i'm going to be reading from this and looking at four different aspects to just ask for support so that we can really take advantage of these amazing energies that are coming to earth at this time and asking for truth and light and shedding light on all these areas for highest and best good of ourselves and our loved ones and connections our communities mother earth humanity all life and all cosmic consciousness okay the card for health is salmon right and um this is a beautiful card of perseverance i'm getting salmon isn't afraid to swim against 
the current, right? So this is sort of like, if you want something, go for it. Um, it's what I'm getting from Salmon. Uh, incidentally, I always associate Salmon with Ascension, so I think this is beautiful. But um, realizing that your physical health, all aspects of health, right? Everything that you do to align spiritually is going to assist with your health. And I have noticed that more and more in my own because I've had health challenges over the past few years. And I'm noticing over the past year, the more I cut those cords, get rid of relationships that are not serving, clean up my environment. The more I do that, the more I work with this purification energy, the better my health comes in. And it's, it's not always what I'm doing with my physical body. So just if you're experiencing physical challenges, do what you're guided to do to support and nurture your physical body, but also recognize that everything that you do spiritually really does reflect on the physical body. And I'm feeling like this card is coming up to really tell us that it's going to be more and more and more and more and more, right? The, the, the spiritual is going to be so tied to the physical, it's going to be very, very tangible. Um, so whatever you can do to... Uh, I, I, what I'm getting a lot here right now is to create sacred space, create your home as a sanctuary, and make sure that you set aside time every day uh, for a spiritual practice that will help to maintain that home as a sacred spot, um, just for your physical health, feng shui, whatever it takes. Um, okay, the second one that's coming up is fox for relationships. And now these are relationships... Um, I'm excluding love and romance here. So these are just like, and it could include your romantic relationships, but it's really more on the relationship part of that rather than the love romance part of it. Okay, so Fox and uh, the discernment is coming up and I'm also getting sort of sit on the sidelines a little bit and observe, okay? This Fox is kind of sitting under the moon and he is really on the lookout. He's observing, he's seeing what he can see. He's uh, kind of surveying to see what the the landscape is before he takes action. And I'm feeling like um, that's a really good lesson from Fox is that uh, th these are just kind of really unpredictable times. Everybody's uncertain. There's a lot of stress. And so when somebody acts, it, it's really, really easy to assume that they they act for some reason or another, right? And it's also really easy to react very quickly. But Fox is just saying, hey, stop, wait, look and listen, figure out where the danger is, where the opportunities are before you take action, as well as, you know, do I really need to react in this way? Can I react with love rather than a knee-jerk reaction of stress or annoyance or whatever it is, right? Stop, look, wait, listen, observe, and then act. So the third card is going to be around career and business, anything that's supporting our financial and material health. And it could also pertain to purpose as well, right? Um, career isn't always married to purpose, but often it is. So this is um, kind of purpose and finance all rolled into one snake coming up as a challenger. Look out for snakes in the grass, right? Um, like, like the Akashic guides warned, um, allies can look like enemies, foes can, can look like friends. So be, you know, tread carefully, right? <laughs> tread carefully. Um, and also, you know, this idea of don't tread on me too uh, with a snake. I think this word tread is like <laughs> coming forward. So know what your boundaries are. Know what's important to you, right? And if you, you know, know what your needs are, know who you're here to serve, you know, and, and know what you're good at and what you're not. Because sometimes it's like we want to be, we, we get over enthusiastic sometimes and, and overstep our bounds in, in terms of what we can bring to the table. Other times we underestimate ourselves. Sometimes we underestimate other people, right? So it's just really like being aware, again, of the strengths, the weaknesses, respect, respecting boundaries, and finally, there's the card everybody's waiting for, is the Romantic Love card. And let's draw one 
for love and romance in our lives. Remember, if you don't have a romantic partner, it doesn't matter. We can always romance ourselves. And even if we do have romantic partners, there's always that element of romance that we, that's super healthy to have with oneself, right? Um, you know, taking oneself on a date, doing something wonderful for yourself, looking at yourself in the mirror and saying, I love you. Um, all these things are super important. And I personally believe if we don't have that beautiful romance with ourselves, you're never going to find it with somebody else. So here is Ferret again, coming up as a challenger, right? So um, Ferret feel into this. Um, okay, Ferret's a real warrior, right? It's a member of the weasel family. It can go for, for the throat very easily. Uh, so this is just sort of a, a warning um, to <laughs> tone it down if you've got a lot of fire. Again, if tensions are high, whew, do that breathing thing. Um, the other side of the, the the ferret that can show up as a, as a shadow element is the idea of sneaking in, right? Being sneaky and manipulative. The guy's a real ferret, right? Or ferreting out. You can ferret out something, um, but it can also show up as a negative thing, right? To just kind of weasel your way into something. Um, so this is just a call to, you know, if you're feeling that warrior energy, bring it up into the light, maybe connect with some of the, like a lion, lion is a great one, lion embodies this king archetype, and just being out in the open, using your voice, using your voice to communicate what's important to you, it's super, super important, and um, that way you'll have this solid foundation um, framework that's really needed in order to allow that love and romance to blossom. Right. So if you've enjoyed this reading, I have a few resources for you. The transcript to that Akashic guidance is available in that link down in the description. I've also created a playlist because this is like the third, I think it's the third Lionsgate video I've made. I've made a playlist of Lionsgate videos so that you can, if you want to, um, see what showed up for the last couple of years. There might be something that pertains to this year as well. I'll put that up here. And then also uh, I have a spirit animal video coming up. It's the first one I've done for a long time and it is on lion spirit animal. So that will be premiering on the actual apex of the lion's gate 8-8. Eight, eight. And it's also going to be really pertinent to the lion's gate because that lion energy is really, really strong and part of this whole, whole landscape portal phenomenon. So um, if you want to catch that, be sure to subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and it will show up on your notifications feed. So hope to see you there. Um, in the meantime, have a wonderful time. Enjoy this energy. It's amazingly powerful. And remember, you were born to be free.